Hello everybody, welcome to this week's ITL. Yeah, I know I, I missed the uh, Thursday video. I, uh, I basically just didn't, I went through my videos and I really didn't see anything I really wanted to post. And this week, I uh, really didn't get to ride the bike, the kid, the goat very much this week. Well, I didn't ride it at all. Um, due to last week, on the way back from my Tuesday ride, I actually stopped at a stop sign, which yes, yes, Matt, I do stop at stop signs, um, occasionally. <laughs> but I went to put my left foot down to stop at a stop sign and my boot slipped in the uh, this gravel and fine sit was on the road and it gave me a nice jar on that leg so I figured you know what I'm going to just take it easy because I mean I'm walking with an incredible limp right now and it's been over a week later um, but yeah but yeah, anyway, I ended up caging it this week for what I wanted to do, and I don't record in a cage unless it's like a face shot. So, but I actually, anyway, I took the, uh, I got a couple things in over the week, past weeks, and uh, I figured, you know what, I'll go ahead and throw this out for you guys. Basically, well, it's got good and it's got bad. And normally I like to, uh, I, I hope to be able to get things in I do budget mindedly whenever I order things and show you guys say hey this is this is good this is good and this is good well not a hundred percent this this week sorry and one of the things is this right here and some of you will recognize what this is for the you, so you all that don't recognize what it is, this is actually a battery eliminator for a Baofeng. It fits on the UV5R, which is what I got. Um, this here, I mean, th this is the rule of thumb I've been going with after learning this. You look at it, it's got blue stripe crossed it. It's not... <laughs> The good stuff in Balfang don't normally have a blue stripe in my my experience. Some people, other people might have better experiences, but not mine. Um, and I feel that something is loose now in there. It hasn't been dropped. But yeah, it still says Balfang on it and, and everything. You first, I first plugged this in to the cigarette lighter inside the, the cage or say the bike. The Balfang starts up seems to be running just fine until you go to key up you key up nothing happens the screen goes black you get off the key it comes back it's not put enough voltage out so there's a problem with this and this came from China the funny thing is I ordered this through uh, eBay not wish but, I mean, eBay gets things through China, too, just like Amazon. But, yeah, I didn't pay a whole lot for this. I mean, it was, what, five bucks, maybe. It cost me more to send it back than it is to just toss in the garbage. <laughs> My eyes are really, like, it's not a big loss. But we will be tearing this apart to see if I can find, figure out what's wrong with it, if it can be repaired. But, yeah, some people have had good luck with them. Some haven't. This has been a troublesome one. Now, another thing that I got in, I got in, this was from Wish actually. <laughs> yeah. This little inky dinky, well, I'm gonna see if I can get in full screen here. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's what, seven inches, maybe eight inches. Uh, yeah, maybe seven inches long, tall. This is a little magnet mount antenna for you, the Baofeng UV5R I got it for. And uh, it's supposed to be dual band. Which I didn't expect it being so small, so short. But I was very surprised. I figured, you know, with this size of an antenna, it might get me what my, uh, my stock antenna might get me. 
when it gave me, gave me whenever I wasn't inside the house. But whenever I tried it, it hit my local repeater nice. But that repeater at 13.6 miles at 440, it hit it no problem. Not a one problem. Like, that surprised me. That surprised me. It made me very happy. And I only paid, oh, I think it was like four bucks for this on Wish. It was free plus shipping. You can find deals like that. And there is a downfall to this little antenna, though. I didn't have any, any issues because I took the antenna off the SUV before traveling down the road. But the magnet on the bottom seems awful weak. My thoughts on it is I'm going to go ahead and just get myself a, another a nice stronger magnet to put on the bottom of it. Adhere to the bottom. Then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, rubber on that, the bottom of that magnet so it doesn't scratch my paint up or anything. And then go from there. I mean, it should just do just fine. It should, it should work out for me. Which... I will be ordering another one eventually and putting it on the back end of the goat. I mean, this little antenna, it, it does, does pretty decent in my eyes. Good deal. Good deals. So, listen, this goes into the bag where, well, I'll put, go ahead and put the, uh, the battery eliminator in the bag and so I can tear it apart and see if I can figure out what's up with it. It might not be repairable or whatever. But, yes, this is basically a ham radio fest today. Oh, I did get one other thing in not too long ago. And this is basically for my QRP radio that I've been putting together. It goes along with the, the key that I got had gifted to me. And, uh, let's say the paddle, it's key paddle. Yeah, um, and also the the pixie kit that I got, give, uh, that I bought, and uh, this is kind of goes in the middle. This is a uh, QRP guys mini gear version two. And I don't have the kit right here with me. I don't have it put together yet, but that's what basically it looks like. Um, put together, it's uh, you might ask. Well, what, what what is this, a Kier? This is a Kier. Uh, there's lots of varieties of of ways to use a Kier. My specific beginning usage for a Kier is actually that I am. I might as well start. I might say. I might as well say I'm starting out Morse code, even though I did or learn it to a degree as as a child. But I haven't used it for so long. And then you say, yeah, don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's what this will do is I can I can use the Morse code, get the key to, for the paddle, and do the uh, do the Morse code, do the coding. This will hold it, and then in memory and then I can release it and I can set the speed that I want it to be released. That way it can be more, better readable for other Q, QRPers, I say, ham radio people. And uh, it just makes it easier for them to be able to to read it and understand what I'm trying to say. You might ask why am I doing all, all kits? Well, for one thing, it's actually more cost-effective in my eyes for somebody that's starting out. You put a little bit of a labor in putting the kits together. Yes, but it's for the, the cost savings, it's, it's tremendous. It's tremendous. Um, and eventually, I'm, th I'm planning on putting my kits, well, most of my kits together into one case and having it so... Like I do is pull one case out. Popo slow down, almost stop.
Well, anyway, have it all in one case and basically have it as an independent radio. Which should be kind of cool. But I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to do it under plexiglass so everybody can see the different kit, the kits, and I'll have it labeled inside. But I'm not planning on, on. I mean, I might do it temporarily with the Pixie kit. But you have to chain, manually change out the uh, the crystals to be able to change, uh, change your frequencies. Eventually, eventually, I'm going to go ahead and get a tunable uh, QRP radio that you don't you can tune it yourself without having to change parts out. I want to get one of those, and that way I can uh, it'll it'll be more usable, be more usable. But I'm I'm not starting out with this because I mean one of the main reasons of doing this, the kits and all this, is to show I've always pride my channel on showing that this stuff can be done on a budget. I mean, could I go out and get a full-fledged radio? Well, technically I can. Pocketbook says no. <laughs> but, I mean, anybody can... I mean, I guess, roundabout way, I mean, you can beg, borrow, steal, whatever, and get what you need. But it's like, or save up, or you know, what I mean, I, I I find it that doing it on a budget, showing that I can do it on a budget, one way or another, just put a little bit of labor into it. And if you had a, if you if you're not good at soldering, if you do have a friend that has solder, that's good at soldering, maybe you have a skill that you can barter with. I mean, things can be done, or pay them to solder it for you. Because this here, actually, this kit, and there's lots of functions to this kit. This kit, I mean, they see on here, they have a rating from easy to too hard, basically. And it's just level two from, e from the easiest. So, I mean, it's... It should be no problem. But this by looking at the kit, this is one of the smallest board size-wise kits that I've had so far. Because my, I mean, the paddle, the gear, whatever you call it, it's paddle gear. It's a paddle. <laughs> it is a uh, it uh, it originally needed, it originated as a kit. The the pixie kit. It, well, its name kit. It's a kit. Yet again, kit. Now, I did find some small boxes to put, go ahead and put the, uh, the the other two kits in as a, they're completed. But they're for storage only. They're not really. I'm, I didn't mean them to be there to basically uh, build a case for them to house them. I mean, to be used to used out of. And I'm not going to worry about that for now. I've got plans in the future and. If I do anything right now, it'll be just a waste of my time and money, and it ain't just ain't worth it to me. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> with the combination of these three kits, my antenna, the adapter for the the, the coax for the, the antenna, I got pretty much everything together except. For I gotta find a speaker for the Pixie Kit. I got a feeling I have one. It's just going through and trying them out. Now I have one that goes really faint, but I mean you can tell that it's it just doesn't. The Pixie Kit doesn't have the the, the amplifier amplification to be able to to get a good sound out of it. Because yes, I plugged it in twice. And listen, and I got I could hear a signal with my antenna. It just it was it sounded faint, and I got a suspicion that was just the speaker kind of out of it. And I'm thinking about if nothing else, just pop for a uh, earbud and plug it in that way. Yes, only I could hear it, but that's all really matters, really, in the end. But yeah, I'm planning on. My trip to Chicago, Suburban Surrider's house, to 
actually taking all three kits with me. If I got this finished, it'll be going with me. If it's not finished, I'll take it with me anyway. Not else. If I need a need a little bit of a hand soldering, maybe Suburban Rider will go ahead and uh, give me a hand with it, and we can actually try it out at his place. And uh, I can play with his equipment, and he can play with my kids. That don't sound right. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I could kind of try out what he had he has for as far as QRP and uh, different ham radio things. And uh, I know he doesn't have the the kits that I have, and he could try those out and see what he thinks, because this is a cheap alternative, and he he might be able to take it as a travel kit. So many kits. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm looking forward to putting this together. It's a lot of soldering due to the fine pin points for the chips and stuff. But it, it'll, it'll be well worth it. Uh, but yeah. I've got my uh, UHF, VHF actually for the bow fang. It's pretty much wound down. I uh, would like to get that. Like I said, I like to find out what's going on with that with, with the uh, battery eliminator and see if I can get that going it's not a must I seen it I seen it was fairly cheap so I went ahead and pulled the trigger for it I mean I've got enough alternative battery charging ways that the battery charge and it's it, it to eliminate the battery is not a big deal I mean most of the time if I have a, a way to eliminate that the, the battery by using that I have a way to charge my spare batteries and I've got two batteries so it's it's not it's not a big deal at all um my fact I do have a new battery uh pack it's a uh, for charging your USB stuff solar one and uh because my other one died and i will stop bringing out and show it sometime it, it, it seems to be pretty good and actually that will be going on that goes along with me whenever i go with the the ham radio so that's another that's an that's an alternative but like i said earlier i like to show that it, this stuff can be done on a budget I like to try different things out and see and then move on from them. Hence the microphone for my shooting ITL. My wireless microphone setup. I've found a one that works for me, works pretty well. And it's actually improved with just, just changing from the lapel style mic to the ear clip mic. It, I don't think really the position really made a huge big difference. What made the difference was it's going to a better grade mic because what comes with the stock with these microphone cheap microphones it just uh, they're just they're just low grade popo came by again was most of my coping you have a great week signing out